Warning, the following video is raw and unscripted. Ranting and rambling may occur. Viewer discretion is advised. Don't let the ghosts and the ghouls disturb you. What's up guys this is Josh from Nightmare on Woodsboro Lake don't mind the mess right now we're kind of uh, in the middle of renovating and kind of uh, redoing our spare bedroom slash office space um, but today I'm coming at you with another review uh, the last one I did was closer to Halloween time when I did the Haddonfield Nightmare um, by Tall Story Productions and Bat Productions um, Braden Timmons uh, director uh, fantastic film uh, that's the last movie I, re I reviewed so uh, today we're jumping into uh, Rose Blood a Friday the 13th fan film uh, it's been out since 2021 <coughs> I can't remember what the, the official release date was but I'm a little behind on reviewing this movie um, but this one's gonna be a doozy so uh you better hang in tight, because uh, things are about to get a little uh, strange, but fun. So, <laughs> uh, look forward to that. I am totally rocking a Blockbuster t-shirt. My wife found me. Um, the last uh, operating Blockbuster is actually in Oregon, um, which it's like a couple hour drive from my mom and where I grew up. So, I want to check it out sometime. Uh brings back such nostalgic memories. But uh, enough ranting. Let's get into the review of this movie. So once again, that is Rose Blood, a Friday the 13th fan film, as you can see above. Um, so this movie was shot in Washington um, by Peter Anthony Productions. I believe Peter Anthony is the director, um, has his own production company. Um, and it is following up 13 months after the events of uh, Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood, uh, where we meet Tina Shepard, the uh, girl with the telekinetic powers who accidentally summons Jason um, from Crystal Lake after Tommy Jarvis put her there. Or put him there. Sorry, put her there. Jason's a little bitch. No, just kidding. I love Jason. He's my favorite, favorite like, horror movie character aside from Ghostface. So, um, no. So Tommy Jarvis, you know, chained him to the bottom of the lake with that, that huge boulder. Left him there. He decomposed. Looks badass when he comes out in part seven. I think that's, like, my favorite version of Jason uh, that there is. You know, with, like, his, like, spine and skeletal, like tissue and like bones showing was just ah, brilliant i loved that version of jason um so we're following up 13 months later with rose blood um tina is still in a facility and she is um well actually ho hold on we start later than that so it kicks off the movie with a much older tina uh, still played by Lar Park Lincoln, uh, the original Tina from Part 7. Um, much older now, and she is still um, in a facility. And she is dealing with, at first you're like, what the fuck? Because she's dealing with uh, Dr. Cruz. Um, he was played by Terry Kaiser. Sorry, I didn't... I took a few notes here because <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't remember some of the names and some of the um, info because I just dove right in this movie. I didn't do any pre-research. I just went, you know, right down the runway. <laughs> we took flight without any pre-procedural stuff. So, um, yeah, so Dr. Cruz is still haunting uh, Tina. And it seems very realistic, but we all know he died in part seven um, with a very, um, what would be 
seen as a gruesome death, but it was off screen, um, due to like censorship and like the ratings and everything back in the day. Um, they didn't show that death on screen, uh, would have been with a, like a tree trimming, um, weapon. So he's, uh, still in up in her head, uh, given her grief and just not helping Tina's case whatsoever because she's still battling with these inner demons. And, uh, so from there we dive back into the 13 month period after part seven. And we actually have Jessica Hotman, um, an actress I've never seen before. Uh, a lot of these people I've never seen before in my life. Um, you know, being that it's a fan film, that makes sense. Uh, but she did a fantastic job as Tina. Um, played a much colder, calculated version of Tina. Um, with still with some irrational tendencies, because that's just Tina in a nutshell. Um, but you could tell that time and being away from Nick, uh, her love interest from part seven and her mother's death and not being able to attend the funeral and just being like still this project of study, you know, everybody wanting to harness her powers and, uh, the military trying to weaponize that. Um, so you get her like, you know, not so, uh, friendly version, but She's, you could you could tell she still has she's still holding on to who she is but she's definitely grown um, a lot colder due to her circumstances um, so she's you know still being tested and they're talking about this project um, called manifestation and you know they're testing her telekinetic powers still and the end goal it seems is to bring Jason back since he's this unstoppable killing machine and we find out that the uh military is trying to harness jason's uh, abilities and undeadliness or undeadness <laughs> um for their benefit um oh by the way i should have jumped right into this right from the get-go spoilers galore if you don't plan on watching it and you just want to hear my take on it Great. If you plan on watching it, I'm going to give away a lot of shit. So I definitely would uh, tune out of this video if you don't want to like get it spoiled for you. Um, so, so they're working on her and trying to get Alice to, you know, reach her full potential and essentially bring back Jason a second time. Um, even though the first time was purely accidental she was like wanting her father back um because her mother and her father would fight a lot and she ends up ultimately killing him um on accident you know the whole like little dock thing that he's on trying to get her to come back in um off the lake collapses with him in it and he gets just crushed and sent to the bottom of the lake um, due to her telekinetic powers and her getting so upset because once she gets upset um, her powers just go off the charts and um, if you haven't seen part seven watch it it's a different insert into the series but I still enjoyed it nonetheless um, but so yeah they're they're trying to get her to to redo this and bring Jason back again they, you find out that they salvage his, um, hockey mask and stuff and weapons and have it all ready for him there at the facility, um, or military installation, wherever they're at exactly. I can't remember what it was called. Um, but yeah, they fuse the mask back together. So it's kind of got like this, uh, line where they sealed it back up because you know in the seventh movie you you know she uses her telekinetic powers and it breaks the mask in half and we get our gruesome look at zombie jason which was fantastic i love that look um and so they're they're doing their thing with tina and then she finds out that they're bringing in a second girl 
uh, named Rose. And Rose also possesses these telekinetic abilities that Tina has. And so they're trying to harness her powers as well. Um, and, you know, it's pretty much almost like a fail-safe. If Tina doesn't work out, it's like a backup plan almost. And so they're, they have Rose as well now in their possession. And you find out that Rose uh, accidentally killed her parents too. Um, with her powers as well. So the whole movie, they're just, you know, they're, they're pushing and pushing and trying to get uh, Jason under their belt. And, you know, most of the movie... She's suffering with her flashbacks and her nightmares and trying to be like this um, kind of motherly figure almost, it seems like, to Rose. Um, and they're just dealing with being trapped in this, this project that's going on. And by the end of the movie... Um, you know, they finally, the military gets what they wanted. Um, Tina brings Jason back up from uh, Crystal Lake. And Jason just goes on a motherfucking killing spree. Now, Kane Hodder is my favorite portrayal of Jason. His part, his work in part seven was phenomenal. This guy, Jason Brooks, who plays Jason in this movie... I feel paid a real homage to Kane Hodder because he was just brutal as hell. He literally was just like, I mean, some of the kills were basic. Some of them were a little more, um, you know, out of the box, I guess, in a way, of, in a matter of speaking. Um, you've got, so let me just run down what we've got going on here. Um... He rips off one dude's face in front of another guy um, who actually, I'll, I'll name this guy. because Let me just name a few honorable mentions of some of the great acting in this movie. Uh, not everybody, um, not everybody was like full on like giving it their all it seemed like. Some of them were like very, eh, not the worst acting I've seen in the world, but definitely weren't very fluid in the movie um and then there was just some phenomenal actors and i want to name those right now sorry getting off track here um so jessica hotman i already mentioned she played a fantastic uh rendition of alice alice motherfucker <laughs> i mean tina she played a fantastic version of tina not fucking alice um then you've got jason brooks like I just mentioned, he was a badass version of Jason. He definitely lived up to the Part 7 Jason, I feel like, in my my mind. Um, I'll leave that for you to decide. If you've uh, seen it, leave a comment below. Let me, let me know how you think Jason Brooks did uh, as Jason Voorhees. Um, and we got... I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. I had to write it down. Uh, Sine... Lotsis? Lotsis? Uh, she played Rose. I feel like she did a very good job at a scared but very troubled and dangerous um, young girl. Um, as I'll reveal later uh, what exactly happens. Um, and you got another name I can't pronounce. Jaquint Braden? Or Broden? Um... I am so sorry if I'm butchering names. I am not. It's not intentional whatsoever. Um, he played the Duke. Um, they called him like the Mushroom Man or something like that. He had some role to play in uh, the Manifestation Project. But as you find out later on, he he's just trying to make means to an end. He doesn't. He wants to help Tina get out of there and meet up with Nick and. Um, He's not really, like, all that bad of a guy. He's a, a... It seems like he's a family man. And he's just doing what he has to do to to bring home the bacon. And uh, I thought he played a really great character as well. I really enjoyed his on-screen time that he was there. Um, but yeah, so... 
they finally bring back Jason. He is brutal as fuck. He is like, like I said, he ripped off a dude's face. Uh, the general had uh, suffered previously in the movie. Alice got pissed. Um, oh, and Rose got pissed because, you know, he was being such a, a douchebag to... Um, well, he's, he had been a douchebag to them, like, the whole entire time. He, he's a just straight-up dick to everyone. But, um, you know, Rose, they're in the rec room, and they're just trying to hang out and just try to have some level of normalcy. They're playing Operation. This movie, you know, like I said, is based still in the 80s. It's 13 months after Part 7. Uh, the atmosphere was great because, like, you know, they were playing like old school video games and the music just felt so right and like the filming and the techniques it just felt like a real continuation of this film so i i really enjoyed that aspect of it as well um but she shatters a glass into his eye and so he has to wear an eye patch um but jason rips out his other good eye <laughs> and then snaps his neck um Chucks an axe. Kind of almost reminds me of, like, the axe throw and, like... I think he might have done it with one hand. I can't remember. But, like, kind of just was reminiscent of... Made me think of the Friday the 13th remake in 2009. Like, with that whole axe thing with the dude takes an axe right to the face. And then he just comes up and... Rips the axe out of the, of the, of the other guy's face. And so... Um, then we've got one of these other guys who thinks he's like a total juggernaut badass and he, um, you know, rips his hand off when he pulls this briefcase from the guy and it like pulls it down to like the skeletal tissue and his, his bones. And like, it's just, he's just screaming like a little girl, like, you know, like, Oh my God, my hand. And then he, uh, he gets bludgeoned to death by Jason with that, with that, uh, briefcase or uh, lockbox, uh, whatever it was. Um, you've got one guy took, takes a knife through the bottom of the chin. Like I said, some of the, some of the kills were simple but effective uh, in this film. Um, one, we have a returning one, uh, kind of like a homage to part six. Um, you got the hand through the chest, ripping out the heart like uh, Tommy Jarvis's uh, friend in the beginning of part six when they are digging him up and ultimately bring him back as our first look at the undead Jason um, when he's electrocuted and, or through the fence posts. So kind of like a kind of like a nod back to that kill because he punches right through this guy's chest and pulls out his heart. Um, which was, which was cool to see again. Um, he, uh, he broke a dude over his knee, like, he snapped his spine, like, over his knee, like, um, and I'm so excited about this one. We finally get the unrated kill with the tree trimming, um, the tree trimming tool, like the saw. Um, that is fan service right there. That is bringing back some fan service. If, if it wasn't already enough bringing back some of the original characters, we all know we wanted to see that kill in Part 7, and we finally get it. He uh, kills one of the, the female um, army gals, um, the soldiers, and he does the same thing. He cuts her right in the stomach, gut, and like cuts her like in half, pretty much. And uh, earlier in the movie, she swallowed a bullet. And you see, like, her her bottom part of her corpse hit the ground and the bullet fall to the ground, too. And we finally get that. And so that was a great moment for me because I know back then I was like, I'm like, dang, man. They're, like, hot, you know, they're, they're cutting out the good kills and they're really, like, watering this down and serving us, like, this watered-down version of a Mountain Dew. And Mountain Dew is my favorite soda. You don't water that shit down. And Friday the 13th is, like, one of my favorite franchises. You don't water that down. So screw you guys in Hollywood. And screw you freaking rating system back in the day and censorship. Um, I'm glad we finally get it. So, sorry. Rant over. Um, so, uh, fun fact. Uh, Jason Brooks, uh, the 
awesome portrayal of Jason, uh, actually suffered several injuries on set. Uh, I heard that he um, sever or he um, uh, fractured his forearm. Um, he also had metal fragments in his eye, severed multiple fingers, uh, and also took eye damage from one of the lenses. Uh, but he never missed a single shot. That is freaking dedication. Um, and, you know, you get that from Kane Hodder, too, uh, being that he did his own stunts. And, like, dude's a straight-up badass. And I, Jason Brooks definitely is following following suit because he was just like, you know what? I'm taking I'm taking damage and I'm stick I'm sticking with it like and that's that's how you get a great film is people being dedicated to their craft and to the to the art um as well as this being a fan film servicing the fans to the full extent now with that being said near the end of the movie we get some weird ass shit going on um so Jason He's gone through, like, all these people, the doctors, soldiers, and now we've got Tina and Rose still kind of, like, strapped down and, like, tied up in this room, and Jason starts to come for them, and Tina's kind of still, like, she's, like, out, like, she's, like, ugh, and Rose uses her powers um, to help Tina out, too, and ends up um, conjuring up, like, this flame square, like, you know, like, this portal almost, and of all motherfuckers to come out of the goddamn square, we get motherfucking Michael Myers. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I'm stoked when, like, you know, you get crossovers and you get, like, you know, like, Friday, like, Freddy vs. Jason. I love that movie. And no matter how cheesy parts of it were, I liked that they put up two like cl classic titans of horror against each other. So getting that same kind of moment of like Michael Myers, and then you all of a sudden hear the like the John Carpenter theme playing, I was like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "Where the hell did this come from?" <laughs> Who was sitting in the drafting room and was like? You know what? That last section of the movie, we should bring fucking Michael Myers to face off with Jason. Props to whoever did it. Because I, you know, I was excited. But it was cut so short. Like, you you got such a brief fight scene. I was hoping for some just, like, ass whooping. Like, straight up, like, when Jason takes Freddy, slams him through the freaking windows. And, like, runs his body through the side of the cabin. And, like, um, you know, they're, like, hacking each other up at the end of Fr uh, Freddy vs. Jason. And, like, J uh, Freddy's shoving his own, like, machete into Jason. And, like, I just was hoping for some, like, brutal, climactic, like, climatic, sorry, fight. And it was cut so short. Um, Tina's, you know, like, shouting for her to... Send them back. Send them back. And for a moment, all goes silent. Michael Myers and Jason are nowhere to be seen. You're like, okay, is this how we're ending? But no. She sent Michael Myers back, that's for sure. Uh, Jason ends up stabbing Rose to death. Um, and... Shit. From there, I mean, essentially, you know, we get Tina's distraught. She fucks around with Jason a little bit. And then we go back to the present. And she's sitting there, still still hanging out in a, the facility she's in in the beginning of the movie. And... She's sitting there trying to do this crossword, and she ends up spooking this dude. Like, she, like, uses her powers on him a little bit, and he gets freaked the fuck out. 
leaves the room, and then this other doctor, who I thought did a, he did a great performance as well. Um, I can't remember his name, though. So he comes in, and he is, like, being this total douchebag to uh, Tina's character. And he's, like, not letting her finish her crossword. And talking all this mad shit to her, like, saying, like, you know, I, I've heard the stories, and it's all it's bullshit, and you're not, I'm not scared of you. Oh, excuse me. I'm not scared of you, um, kind of thing going on. And saying that she's delusional, and, like, she's like, well, my delusion, <laughs> that delusion is right behind you. And the dude's like, oh, oh, like... I call bullshit on that. Sure enough, turns around to find Jason standing there. And Jason fucks him up. And with the blood, she's like, dips the pen in and finishes her crossword with um, the name Rose. Um, and then you have this moment where Jason's like, he's ready to kill, uh, kill Tina. And... Um, she starts using her telekinetic powers on him and has him like struggling, you know, starts bending his fingers back and he drops his machete and all of a sudden we get Nick back. Um, they brought back, uh, I think his name was Kevin Spiritas, Spiritas? Played the original Nick in Part 7. So once again, we get another uh, returning uh, cast member from the Friday the 13th franchise, which was another nice nod to see. I was hoping they would. I was like, dude, you brought back Tina. You brought back Dr. Cruz. If you're going to bring back the love interest, you've got to get the original guy. you gotta get you got to get the real Nick back. And sure enough, last like five minutes of the movie, we get Nick back. And he's like, Tina! And like she's like fighting with Jason using her telekinetic powers and opens some kind of portal way. I don't know if that was, uh, like, back to hell or um, where that led to exactly, but Jason was like, oh, fuck no. And he was, like, grabbing on, trying to climb out. He was doing pretty well. And she just, like, nailing the coffin. You're going in. And finishes him off, and he gets sucked back into this portal. And Nick comes and finally gets to be with his love again. Um, and they have this, you know, nice, re like, reuniting moment. Um, and that's pretty much where it ends, is, like, them finally getting their happy ending together, it seems like, for now. I'm sitting there, and I'm, like, kicking this all in. And, you know, the credits are rolling. And, uh... All of a sudden, end of the credits arrive, and sure enough, there's another scene, and it has uh, Tom Savini's Jason, like that hell version of Jason with like the black mask and the fire on the Triton, and literally tells us that it's to be continued. I'm like, oh fuck yeah, they need to bring that motherfucking Tom Savini Jason to the big screen, like that is another fucking awesome version of Jason, and we've never fucking seen him besides in the Friday the 13th game and stuff like that, um, and just concept art, but, like, never brought to the screen, and I think we need it. So, um, please, 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 follow it up with that shit. I need to see that, Jason. I need that in my life. So, overall... You know, for I've heard mixed reviews and mixed shit on this movie. Um, you know, I don't know much about, you know, I've heard some, some mad shit being talked. And I don't really know, like, I haven't done any footwork and looked into it. But, like, from my perspective of just watching the film and, and looking at it with a non-biased view. And um, seeing it as a follow-up to Part 7. I actually really enjoyed this movie, for you know. Fan films these days have been actually pretty damn good. And I felt like the kills were pretty good. The atmosphere was great. 
uh, seeing the reoccurring characters was phenomenal. Um, and just the whole, like, closure that we get. You know, because Tina... I mean, we don't get much closure with Part 7. Um, I felt like I wanted to hear a little more about Tina instead of jumping right into Jason Takes Manhattan. Kind of, you know, that, that whole spiel going on. I mean, that has its pros and cons. I'm not going to jump into that because that's not what this uh, video review is about. But it just felt like a good wrap-up to that. But then we find out it's not really a wrap-up because Jason's fucking coming back. So I wonder if they're going to bring back... Tina and Nick, you know, again for another film. Um, but I guess we won't know for now. But overall, I think I'd score that movie... Ooh. Definitely a solid 8. Now, I might catch flack for that. But I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed just how it felt so nostalgic. It felt so 80s. It felt like it really belonged... Uh, as a continuation of uh, part seven into like, you know, like what could have been a part eight, at least we could have gotten like some, some wrap up. And so I enjoyed it. That's all I got to say. I, you know, you guys did a great job at, at this film. Uh, that's my honest review. You know, I'm not always so like, I wouldn't say giving, but always so positive on, Fan films, I mean, like, some of the ones I've seen recently have been fantastic. Like, The Nightmare of Haddonfield, I thought that was pretty phenomenal. I thought that was a great, like, alternate timeline, H2O, another, you know, 20 years later, uh, edition. Um, and also with Never Hike Alone, I thought that was fantastic. Um, I'm waiting for frickin' Charles, uh, uh, but... I think it's Tony Biz um, and his film production company. I'm waiting for that. I've seen the trailers and I'm like, dude, let's get this Charles movie rolling because it looks pretty freaking good from like just the little pieces that we've gotten. You know, we haven't gotten the whole picture and I, and I like that. But you guys are like leaving me waiting. I'm, I'm ready. So you better drop that shit soon. Come on. Quit leaving me out on the line to, to, to hang and dry. I need it. So, but yeah, I want to know your guys' honest opinions if you've seen it. Um, leave a comment below. Tell me what you thought, you know, where did it lack? Where did it succeed? Um, How did you feel about seeing, like, you know, uh, some of the original characters coming back from Part 7? Uh, how do you feel Jason uh, Brooks did as Jason Voorhees? Um... And did it feel like it fit into the franchise, or do you feel like it was just a flop? Um, I'd really like to know. Uh, well, you guys know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys later.